my idea was to present a bit the big picture. So uh, Italy is quite well, well known about museums, but I personally think that museums in Italy are not really sustainable in social terms. And, uh, but it's quite important to show you why and how is the structure of the Italian museums. And the second part of my speech, I will present you uh, what we are doing in Brescia, that is a quite small town in the north of Italy, but quite special one, and in terms of uh, um, integration, working with refugees and immigrants. But let's start with the big picture first. So, uh, is it Italy, of course, is a tiny country, but uh, that the last numbers that we have uh, from 2011, and uh, they show us that we have 4,588 museums, so quite a lot. And, uh, and uh, the typologies of museums are, of course, different, but the really important things is that, are that uh, we have 8,000 municipality. So that means that we have 1.5 museums every 100 square kilometers, and about one museum every 13,000 people. So it's, it, the scenario is, and the distributions of those museums, it's, it's quite nice to understand, because the, just the 10% uh, of the museum are located in 12 cities, uh, with more than 250,000 inhabitants. So, uh, Torino, Milano, Venice, Verona, Genova, Bologna, Florence, Rome, Naples, has an average of 41 museums each. So, uh, in particular, the 4.8% of the museum are located in Rome, Florence, and Venice, and probably are the museums that you know most. Um, that's the distribution in terms of territory. So look at the second line. Uh, and then we go to the next one. Italian museums are located, the big part of the Italian museum are located not in the center, not in the south, but in the north of Italy. That is quite different from the idea that we used to have Florence and Rome. No, Milano, Torino, and and Venice. That's another interesting part of the distribution. But this picture shows us which is the dimension of the Italian museum. So, museum in Italy at least are small. The big part of the museum are really, really tiny. And and they are quite young. The, the Italian museum system, uh, it's, it doubled in the last years. So it's really, really interesting to see that till the, 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 after the 2000, many, many, many museums uh, were ejected sometimes in, in our, in our, in our uh, cities. Let's go one minute here. So the sector is quite well divided in two parts, but the ownership of the museum are mostly public, so it's public. And uh, the private sector is growing up fast. And at the moment you see it's 36% uh, of, of the total. Um, and the, best, the most uh, important sector is the uh, sector of the municipality owned museum. So, 8,000 comuni and the 65% uh, of the museum are located in small towns around Italy, are tiny, tiny museums of course, with no money at the moment. And um, let's see this picture that is about management. 
the 77% of our museum are directly managed by the institution that owns the museum. So the municipality managed directly the museum owned by the municipality, but also the company that owns a, a private museum, the museum uh, managed directly its museum. So it's, it's, it's quite interesting to see the, the picture. Let's go to the budget. You see? <laughs> So that's the, 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 the percentage of the, of the, of the, budget, the, 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 the budgetary autonomy in, in the Italian museum sector. So, starting from here, and we have quite a lot of visitors. In 2011, so five years ago, we had, we had like a 100 million visitors. And, uh, and, uh, but the 51% the of those visitors are located in Tuscany, in Lazio, that is the region of Roma, and Lombardy, that is the region of Milano and, and Brescia. And look at that. Going global, question mark. Foreign visitors are the 44.9%, but for more than half of Italian museums, foreigners represent a minority of the public, no more than 10%. Only 40% museum workers are able to provide information in English, and only the 21% 20, uh, 20, of museums have English test translations. In short, the Italian model is characterized by small size organizations located in small urban centers, wake, of course, lack of cultural animation capabilities, because no money, no party, not able to generate financial resources, and mostly owned by munici local municipality. We just We just had this new law for the first time ever in Italy. We have a, a museum, a museum um, uh, directorate in the in the in the Ministry of Culture uh, since 2014. Uh, this uh, directorate established uh, 30 museums with special autonomy, 17 regional museum poles that can coordinate uh, the museum owned by the state, but also other museum in one national museum system. That's the frame, and from this point of view, that is quite essential to explain you what, what will be the second part of my presentation, I will try to say something about Brescia. Brescia is... Uh, Definitely a rich town, 200,000 people. It's on the top five for GDP in Europe, in, 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 the, EU, in, the, in, the, in the in the EU. So, uh, thanks to not sustainable industries, I have to say, because we produce steel and weapons, Beretta, you know. And uh, but we have. 113 different communities. The 25% uh, are not Italian-born people, and the 30% of not Italian-born kids uh, are now in the primary school. And a lot of them speak uh, a Brescian dialect, like uh, Balotelli, the football player. You know Balotelli? Balotelli is from Brescia, so it's... it's were really it's a, an important example of this, in, this big transformation of pressure. So that, that's the result of, of a new phase and uh, that started more or less 20 years ago. Brescia is part of a UNESCO site and uh, it's just 35 minutes from the Lago di Garda, the Garda Lake, that's one of the most popular touristic sites in the European Union. 
This part of, the, of all that, nobody knows that Brescia is a cultural city because its industrial history is stronger. Uh, the Fondazione Brescia Musei, it's, it, it managed all the city museums, typically objects museums. We have a Pinacoteca Tosio Martinengo that is all over the world famous for the Renaissance paintings. We have the biggest archaeological park in the north of Italy. Uh, we have um, the Museo Santa Giulia, that is a monastery of the 10th century, and is uh, basically an, an archaeological and, and an history museum. And we have this uh, Castello, Castello di Brescia, is probably the biggest after Castello Sforzesco in Milano, in which we have we managed two, muse two small museums. But uh, maybe some one of you saw, saw the Brescia during the conference, uh, uh, the, the ICOM conference, or during the Cristo the Cristo project uh, this, this summer, but it's really, it's really a, a hidden city. Um, in my opinion, a public museums, especially town museums, uh, citizens are both stakeholders and shareholders because they are the owners of the heritage, they finance museum with taxes, and they are, the, of course, the, the most important stakeholders at the end. So, how building new relationship in a town like that, how engaging all the communities, just not the local ones, let me say the WASP. Uh, who are the Bresciani now? Who will be the Bresciani of the next future in a rich town like this? How will they be linked to the local heritage? Why the new Bresciani, they should be interested in the Brescian heritage? It's, I think it's, a, it's an important question for for us, but we will be sustainable where non-Italian born people will be able to see traces on their culture, impression, heritage. So no more correct point of view, but ways to empower people using public cultural heritage. We are doing, we are doing many projects to make our museum more accessible, also in terms of intercultural mediation. But I would love to tell you something about this special product, project that we started uh, four years ago. The project is called Incroci uh, Crossroads. So uh, four years ago, we started with uh, a training course for um, cultural mediators dedicated to refugees and to immigrants. It's really hard in Italy to divide refugees and the immigrants at, at this point, because we are, we are a sort of door, door from, from the south, so people are coming, and, and this is a big work to, to divide people in, in terms of condition and, and motivation uh, of, of their uh, trip in, outside their country. So we, are, we dedicated this training program to, um, to, to everybody that is well, it's coming from outside. The, the aim is to raise awareness of Brescia heritage to, to foreigners, of course, but uh, the idea is, of, of course, to, to not put any barriers so everyone could attend to the, to, the, to the training program in the evening, free of charge, and in four years we get more than 160 mediators trained. The second step was uh, to transform this uh, project into a service. So we, the, the, the mediators that we trained uh, became a permanent museum service. Today we are able to present the cult, of course paid, and the, today not volunteer. Today we, have, we are able to present the cultural heritage in different programs and in different languages like Italian, Ukrainian, Russian, Guinean, uh, Arabic, Urdu, Romanian, and so on, and, and Portuguese, of course, Japanese, also Dutch. And the idea is that the, the, the mutual understanding is, for us, the first step to, to the integration. The third step was uh, uh, to ask them, we call it altri sguardi, other point of views, and uh, in, uh, in each activity, uh, the mediator uh, who was trained before, uh, of course not Italian origin person, uh, is working with a museum professional, friends, to find other interpretation of artifacts and, and painting, basically choosing according to the story they can tell, crossing the, the, the history of the opera with, with personal stories. And we found three tracks. 
One is called sea travel, and we start from the Roman amphors, and the narration has two voices. One voice is the voice of an archaeologist presenting the object. The other voice is the voice of a Greek friend, a Greek mediator, that, that, that is, is there to, to, to explain the, the, the story of his country and the story of the, uh, the memories of his family uh, sailing on, in the Medi Mediterranean Sea and, of course, uh, speaking about uh, Greece, the problem Greece has at this moment with the, with the, with the to be to be really one of uh, the the country like Italy that is totally involved in the in the in the immigration routes. So the the, the visitors are, are involved to to new interpretation of of signs and symbols. Often the result is of this contamination between different cultures is really is really interesting. Uh, we have another one that is based, of course, on food, but the idea is to start from the Renaissance ceramics and the, the Renaissance um, uh, glasses that we have in our collections and uh, to represent this, the history of those objects with an art historian and then involving a, a, a mediator of uh, Moroccan uh, origin that, that Will, will present, is there to present the suggestions of the banquet in the, in the Arabian world, so to compare the use of those objects with the use in, in, in his, his house. The last one, we, we call it Fragments of Life. Uh, it, it, the narrative takes place in a room dedicated to um, a, an, an Italian artist called uh, Giacomo Ceruti, he's an artist of the, the 18th century, really, really interesting. Is, uh, it, of course, there you, you find an historian, an art historian in dialogue with a, with a mediator from Moldova. And, uh, and in particular, we choose one painting in which there is an old uh, woman uh, spinning wool. And of course, the, the art historian is speaking about this painting, but the girl is speaking about their grandmother spinning wool in, 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 her, in her village in, in, in Moldova. So telling about the story of, of their uh, country. Um, the last step is the school involvement. Every year we organize a presentation about our educational project for teachers. Every year we host about 200 people. This year, we, uh, at the end of the presentation, we offer teachers to participate to the narration. And we present the narration as uh, a learning laboratory. After the narration, students can choose an object in the museum, get information about it, and presenting their own story inspired by the object. The 30% of the teachers invited choose the program for the students this year. And for us, it's really important because starting, it's really an important starting point. You have to, to know that Brescia is still an area in which the, the Lega Nord, the, the, racist, the racist party, uh, is still in power, so it's it's it's, it's really uh, for us. This program is, is something Great. really. I just finished, and uh, uh, and because you know, Europe is unfortunately not just in Europe. We are we are building uh, lots of walls, not just material, but also immaterial. So we we, we and thanks to the Scotland, probably some walls are not so high, but we need to press the. For me, the, the, the reset button now and try to find other common trails. A museum can be really useful helping people to do it. Thank you.